Okay, how are you? I'm Cesar David Grisales de Serra. I'm an architect from Colombia. And I have a background in architectural design, visualization and rendering. And um, I'm beam and Revit modeling. So my dissertation is regarding architecturally driven beam processes with practical explorations. And my supervisors are Tomo Cherovsek and Alyosha De Kleva from the Kleva Gregorich Architects. The objective of this thesis is to show and explore the beam in the architectural practice, highlighting as is a very good methodology workflow, but it's not a good creative design approach because it's not so flexible and it's very rigid. So this faces the challenges as how can we make be more appealing to architects and engineers and designers, sorry. So this focus and how was the implementation, how we can improve it with fostering the creativity and contributing with the advancement of the industry. Also showcasing with uh, some of the case studies showing the workflows that can enhance the design processes with uh, future improvements. The thesis will have three case studies. The first one is adoption and implementation in architectural practices, the architectural competition, and integrated visualization. The first one is the process of implementation in architectural practice of uh, a small and medium size. So I choose to do uh, participatory research with uh, one of the best architectural companies in Slovenia, which is the Kleva Gregorich Architects. They found the office 20 years ago by Alyosha de Kleva and Tina Gregorich. They have a design approach by research by design and design by research, focusing on space, society, materials, history and user participation from the beginning to the end of every design process. With notable awards and projects in Ljubljana, in Europe and also in the United States. This process of implementation, uh, we can uh, summary in this graphic by Chesnik, which we can see how are the barriers starting for the first one that is the mentality. While we have the, the mind that is in, in the part of the CAD and 2D workflow that you have uh, lines and hatches and you work in just one plane. Then you get the skills that you, okay, let's change the mentality and start to acquire new skills. So you get to know a lot of new ways of work with 3D. Just not the 3D, you add all the information, the metadata, the levels, the properties and everything. So that's a huge step. Then when you go to the software, and in the software, you have to choose which of the followings you can introduce to the office because you have to be aware how is the how is the team with, with all the knowledge. The organizational part has to be aware that from the beginning to the end, even to the CEO, they are in the same page with the change of the implementation. And also the financial part is very important because from the start to the end, you need to implement training and education, information management, structure the project, and the hardware is not the same as you are working with the CAT uh, systems. So you need to introduce a lot of uh, improvements to the hardware. The guidelines for this, you need to establish in all the standards, the project planning, uh, the collaboration and coordination, not just for the company, with the other companies that you're working. And here we can see the difference between the two workflows when you have the CAD and the 3D with BIM. All this first part is the creative process. When you have the brief of the client, then you start doing the thinking, conceptualization, diagrams, all the relations that you need to do like conceptual maps and then just put it in sketches and lines. Then you go to the 2D CAD or 3D and do the iterations and the options for the design. 
When you get to this point, you can start with the detailing design, and this is when you see the differences. So when you start doing by CAD, you have to develop a lot of different, different files. So you can have the CAD with XREFs and all of it will be updated manually, as we can see with this uh, dash line. And the 3D model is another one. If you want to do a rendering, you can have another one and then schedule it with Excel or another program. Analysis and uh, quantities in another one. Everything, when you go the coordination, you have to send by mail and then do the collaboration without knowing if, if it's okay, the version of the project. When you go to the client and you do the recoordination, you have to be aware if it's okay or it's not completely uh, updated with a new version. When you go to the Revit or the BIM technologies, you go here straight to the part of the coordination because you always work with one file and everything is fed by other users. So the file is always updated. It will have all these um, options that you can have inside just one file, the analysis, the visualization, the drafting, the quantities and the cost will be in the same one. And then you put it in coordination with the other stakeholders. And this allows everything in a common CDE. When you have the open beam, has anyone can use any other software, and everything will be shared in just one cloud. And you have to coordinate, you can have all the messages and everything in just one platform. Then we do an exercise in the company, having all this part, like all the analysis, and then just put it as they was working in a big project for Ljubljana, the science center. So that was a huge step. And then they needed to have like a base file to start any other project with all the standards and all the workflows that they have. So the first part was for analysis and planning. So the first, you have to go and understand all the requirements. How are the workflows, the standardization, the inventory of the families, all the uh, uh, providers and regulatory industry standards, the logos, the branding, everything that they have, all the all has to be customized for every company. The workshop analysis, the naming conventions, coordination and custom parameters were developed. So here we can see all the families that we have in Revit, the, walls, the floors, the ceilings, the doors, everything was selected that it can work for the next project. Being aware that every project is different, but this is very helpful to start any one. The second part is creating the Revit template. When you have all the configuration with the views, the sheets, the welcoming page, all the title blocks, everything in just one file. And the families and contents, the view templates, with the parameters and share parameters. This is how it looks, the final versions of this view template, maintaining the consistency, the documentation standards, ensuring the modeling and reduction of rework. This leads for faster production and is very important for any company. With this, we can have uh, do benefits like well-organized and fully coordinated design documents, interference checking of clash control detection that we can have with 2D, the effective communication with all the clients and the stakeholders, maintaining faster and a quantity surveys. The construction processes can be well-organized, planned, and visualized effectively. Facility management after we build the project, strengthen the company's market production position, sorry, and simplifying the project control and cross-trade coordination. The second case study was going further with design. So we can see the other parts that we show that has the more challenges in the beam. This was a competition in Italy, in Puglia for a coastal tower nearby the sea. 
So it was a coastal tower against the pirates in the in the past. And they wanted to give a new life for this building. It was a ruined tower. So making the first analysis uh, with the workflow is what we have in the previous version. You have all the creative process that has all the steps, but here in this part, the idea will be to have all of this in this part when you have everything in just one file. So having this in thought, uh, we have to start with CAD and the sketches and the 3D in SketchUp. And then when you have all the 3D and all the creative process, you can go to BIM because the thing with BIM is that it's not very flexible because if you have some changes, you have to destroy all your model and you have to start almost by scratch. So uh, having this, when we have all this uh, processing, uh, we can simplify the workflows with automatic updates, data integration, collaboration and visualization, everything in the same file. So here, when you have all the sketches with all the concepts that you want to apply to the project, then you go to the 3D uh, software that is uh, flexible, that you can be created when you don't have to think so much about how it's going to be developed and did for in the software. You need to be fast between the mind and your and your hand. Instead, if you go to Revit, just for developing something very simple, you have to create a mass, then you have to move a lot of points, and then you have to apply the, the curtain wall and also develop a curtain wall with all the settings and all the measurements so you can have it as you want. And then you have to go and hide the massing because it will not look good in the, in the project. All of this that I can uh, that we can see is that this doesn't allow the the creativity. This limiting the sketches capabilities is a data overload because you don't you have to set a lot of things, a lot of properties just to create a simple thing. That's why we did the this example because a simple project. But if you do a bigger project, it's a lot of work just to have the schema. And if you don't have this, then it's very important to have interoperability between the platforms. This was the results. We have all this developed in Revit. When we have the design, it was very good and very faster to develop all the drawings, everything in just one file. So we have all the floor plans, the situation, the sections, the axonometry, everything. And then as it was a competition, you have to give a little more of impact. So it was improved with Photoshop and the renderings. The renderings were did in the same software with Enscape and then post-production with Photoshop. This is the situation, the general program. And then it's how it looks with the uh, simple upgrades, the renderings, and they just send us the, in the model of the 3D of the coastal tower in the ruin and some of the floor plans. And the third case study is the beam integrated visualization so this was uh, also with the Clever Gregory Architects. This is a project that is developed right now in Ljubljana, a science center with a planetarium. It's very close to the university. So making the analysis with the company, they have this thing with the cabin visualization and this applies to a lot of companies in architecture. When you have to create a, a, a rendering, you have all the cats, but as I say, it was cats, lines, and hatches, but you have to create a 3D model. This can be done in AutoCAD, 3D Max or SketchUp. Then you have to improve it with materials and cameras. And then when you go to make the renderings, you need 
uh, engine for this. In this case, we we want to use the V-Ray or any other twin motion. And then you go and create the, the final image. And if you want to create more, you just go with Photoshop. If you want to go to changes, you go to the 3D model or the materials. But if you have everything in just one file, like Revit or ArchiCAD, you have everything in just one file with all the information, the metadata materials, visualization, and also setting the cameras, you open the interface with Enscape that is a plugin for rendering in the same program. When you open this interface, you can visualize immediately how it can look. And this is a big, big change of paradigm because this is skipping all these steps and making everything coordinated and easily to change and export all the images. Also this, when you have to export, is like almost immediately, it's in seconds. But if you do here with V-Ray, it can take like hours. So for setting all this stuff, uh, this is the model of the, of the project. It has all these layers with the plumbing, h pack lighting. Everything has to be very well coordinated and you have to set all the view templates, what you want to see, what you don't want to see. Also changing the location. This is how it looks, the assets in the, in the project, the materials in Revit, the materials in landscape, how it looks in the, in the 3D model. This is the views for the for all the filterings in the end in scheme interface. We have here how it looks the previous file in in Revit. Then this is in clip house you open, but then you start working and improve the settings. This was the final image that we wanted, and then we make the improvements with the Photoshop. These are the images in the interiors. And to close up, we have these conclusions about the future improvements and developments because we need more user and friendly interfaces and more flexible, more easy to use. Everything has to be uh, less thinking about the, about the software and more thinking for the project and the creativity. Then we need to have flexible and sketching conceptual tools, just like we have it in SketchUp because in this part, this software was created just to develop any project in the part that they have everything defined, but it should improve all this part. So they should have the conceptual tools, but in this moment, they don't have it. In any of the software, they don't have it. So they have to change this so that they became more appealing to the architects. The improvement of the integration and parametric design, this is a tool that is being used in all the companies because you can have all the generative design and all the creation of complex forms. And it became with a black screen, but now they have an improvement, but it can be better. And what we have right now with the artificial intelligence, they can make some improvements right now they are doing with some of the plugins. And flexible the licenses model because for the part of the financing is very hard to pay all these softwares. So you can see is the difference is very high. So this can be very good for small offices and also to become more appealing and just to give the stay will be easily to do. Doing this, we think we can transform the way we approach the architectural processes by harnessing the capabilities of BIM to optimize the streamline and collaborate effectively and seamlessly. Thank you.